Operation Vagabond Falcon Part 15. It's time. It's time to fit the engine. I'm taking off the oil filter because we uh, don't want to bang that thing as we drop it in. And the word drop it in, uh, that, that should go away. You don't drop an engine in. You carefully place it down into the engine bay. Oh God, today was nerve wracking. My good friend Dan is here to help out and we're putting on the flex plate to the rear of the engine. Automatics have flex plates, manuals have flywheels, so we have a flex plate. We're doing that to judge how much room we're gonna have and how much the firewall and hump are gonna have to be cut out. Ooh, this was a nerve wracking moment. Since we don't have wheels on the car yet, we can't put it on the lift. Not that we would put it on the lift anyway, because our suspension is there, we can't go up from the bottom, we have to go up over the side and dummy me put the motor mounts on backward. I put the right on the left and the left on the right. So I had to flip them around. And we also had to take the flex plate off because, oh, this is tight. Really? In 1963, they fit Windsor blocks in this thing. How did they do it? They must have had the firewall in a different place by 1963 because this thing, even with those shock towers removed, wow, there's not a lot of room. I mean, we got some room on the sides, on the passenger side, but man, that was a delicate lowering procedure to get that in but it makes me feel a lot better the big motor is in and i can breathe a little bit easier this week it's been a long trip thank you for staying with us but there it is it's in. You see, we had to take the radiator out, and then we, when we go to put the radiator and fan back in, uh-oh, we don't have room for that fan. The fan's too big. The fan hits the water pump pulley. Uh, okay. I really didn't want to have to put pusher fans on here, but we got to go from the other side of the radiator. We got to go in the front, and we can't have a big pusher fan in the front because we have a bracer there behind the grill. So what Bruce suggested and was a very good suggestion says, okay, you can put twin seven fans in the front and that keeps it Ford-ish because the Cobras, the AC Cobras had twin sevens. They had twin seven pushers in the front. So he said, you know, that wouldn't look too bad. You look through the grill, you see two tiny fans in there. That'll look all right. It'll be very Cobra-esque. So, okay. Good enough for Bruce. Good enough for me. At least I can pause here for a moment and and say, okay, the 302 Redeemer is in the Vagabond Falcon. Now, Windsor Block isn't that big, but when you see it inside of a Falcon, looks beefy. The next day, I put the Edelbrock carburetor on, placed the HEI distributor in, and I am not, I have zero patience for you today, Mr. Blister Pack. Yeah, I'm not cutting up my fingers trying to get this bolt out for the carburetor. This is like next level lazy. I'm using an industrial bandsaw to open a package. Yeah, blister pack, let's see you handle this. Oh, and I also put in the bracket, which is gonna use the two bolts by the emergency brake or parking brake handle to hold a bracket that will hold the wiper control switch. A fan messaged me the other day and he said that he was able to get the wiper, wiper switch out. He messaged me on Facebook, named Chris Tucker. He also has a 1960 Falcon. And lastly, I put on the air cleaner. I have about an inch and a half of room between the top of that air cleaner and the bottom of the hood because a Falcon's hood has bracers that run across. I may have to space the air cleaner up just a little bit. I'm not sure if the throttle linkages are going to hit the air cleaner bottom. Anyway, big progress today and I can breathe a little bit easier. Soon we'll be cutting out on next time on Operation Vagabond Falcon, soon we'll be cutting out the hump in the middle for the transmission so we can fit a AOD four-speed in there. I hope, I hope it's gonna go smoothly.